Hey champions, welcome to tonight's webinar. I'm excited to have you here today and just really are excited. We are counting down the days for Summit to kick off. We officially launch our program in six days and we meet with members of Congress in eight days. So we're really excited to have you all here today um, and hope that you've been receiving our text message updates um, this week just to get you excited and get you ready uh, for these for the next week, essentially, for what's happening in 10 days. That's our big event, which is when we'll be meeting with our members of Congress. We are super excited today um, because we are actually gonna walk through um, a really important tool that we're gonna be using for uh, Summit, which is actually our Advocacy Associates portal. Um, so just as a friendly reminder, you should be receiving logins later this week. You may have already received the one from Advocacy Associates earlier today. Um, so that's the portal that we're going to be walking through today. The second login that you'll be receiving this week is actually the portal where we are going to be hosting Summit. Um, so that's the second one. And you will want to use this login because that's what's actually going to give you the opportunity to interact with our speakers and our content and to have the opportunity to actually win some prizes um, and have some fun with us during summit. Um, so I do want to get us started um, soon um, <laughs> to just be respectful of everybody's time. So I see that JC is on the line and I, yeah, and I see Lincoln's on here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you guys. You guys should be able to unmute yourselves. Um, give it a go, Lincoln and JC, and I will hand it off to you all. Hi guys, it's good to see everybody. JC Guy with the Men Foundation. I'm our Director of Global Health Advocacy. Um, I do all of the direct to, uh, to Congress kind of work. So Wendy works with y'all. We work together and then I work with your members of Congress on a daily basis. Um, we are joined today by Lincoln Trapper of Advocacy Associates. You can also hear my toddler in the background. So I'm gonna mute really quickly. <laughs> um, but Lincoln has joined us. He and um, his team over at Advocacy Associates have perfected the art of, uh, of the Hill Day. So we are really excited to have him working with us this year because if I was handling it, you guys would just be getting a bunch of Zoom lines and it would not be this fancy. And I promise you guys are really going to love the platform that Advocacy Associates has for us. Um, and so, yeah, with that, Lincoln's gonna walk you guys through. Go ahead and if you have questions, you can enter them into the chat. I'm sure Lincoln will answer everything that you do have though. So Lincoln, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, JC, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lincoln Clapper. I'm part of the Advocacy Associates team here in DC, and I want to spend roughly the next 10 minutes or so walking you all through your online platform and uh, walking you through how to navigate some of those features. So that being said, I'm going to share my screen here, and then we're going to jump right into the presentation. So you all should have received an email from us uh, not too long ago, uh, actually less than 30 minutes ago, I think, uh, at the most. Uh, it will look something like this. It will come from Advocacy Day at AdvocacyAssociates.com, highlighted here in green. And your link to your schedule is also included there. That's highlighted here in red. And so each advocate has a unique individual login link to their schedule. You don't need to create an account. You don't need to create a password. It will automatically log you into the dashboard. If you feel like you haven't gotten this email from us yet, go ahead and check your spam or junk folder. It more than likely ended up there. If you do find it there, please unmark it as spam. This will be our main way of communicating with you moving forward, and we want to make sure you're getting all of that correspondence. Now, once you're, uh, if, you, if you try to log in, sometimes certain browser settings on certain devices uh, don't save cookies, uh, and so you may end up at the login page right off the bat or you may become logged out of your schedule by accident uh, at some point along the way. So in that case, you're gonna end up at a login page that'll look like this. If you end up at a page like this, what you wanna do is click on the send me a sign in link button. Don't try to enter a username or password, just click send me a sign in link. Go ahead and input the email address that you registered for this event with, click send email and you'll get a new refreshed link to your schedule. If for some reason you're still not able to get in at that point, just go to the support tab on the home page, indicate that you're having an issue getting into your account. This will go directly to our development team and then they'll be in touch with you tomorrow to get that issue resolved. 
Now, once you're launched into your schedule, you're going to see a dashboard that looks like this. You'll see all of your confirmed meetings for next week on the top part of the page. Any pending meetings are still on the bottom. We'll go on the bottom. Uh, it'll be displayed as TBD. We've got about 75% of your meetings confirmed at this point. So more than likely, some of you will see them as TBD for next week. Totally normal at this point in the project. So don't be alarmed if it says TBD. We're more, more, mainly, we're just working on a few details with the offices uh, as the committee schedules are released for next week to make sure we can slot that in appropriately with your, within your schedule. Please also note that all times you see on your schedule are displayed in Eastern time zone. We have taken into account where all of you live. So uh, based off of your time zone, your meetings are gonna take place during normal business hours for whatever time zone you're located in. Uh, and I'm gonna be reviewing later some reminder emails that our system sends automatically that help keep you on track across the various time zones. Uh, but please do recognize that all schedules are listed in Eastern time zone. Now, in order to access the content for each meeting, what you want to do is just hover your mouse anywhere on the module, click on it, and you'll be launched into a dashboard that'll look like this. You'll see the time and date of that meeting at the top, followed by who you're going to be speaking with in that office, whether it's staff, the member of Congress, or both. If there's been a meeting lead assigned to your meeting, you'll see that person's name displayed there. If not, then this area will, will be blank. The join online meeting button will allow you to access the video component of this meeting. Uh, 99 out of 100 meetings are gonna take place on the Zoom platform. And so by clicking on that button, it'll launch you into the room for that particular meeting. The passcode's already been embedded, so you won't have to enter any two or three step process to get access to the room. You can obviously dial in as well if you'd like, and that information will be listed beneath the join online meeting button. In the upper right hand corner will be your talking points. Uh, those will be discussed in more detail later this week, uh, but you'll see those displayed there. Beneath that will be the document section. These were supplemental documents to uh, supplement your talking points. So you'll be able to reference all the material that's been provided uh, by the UN team. Simply click on each document. It'll, down, it'll open as a separate document into a separate tab. So it won't take you away from your schedule You'll be able to have your schedule, your documents, and your Zoom window all open at the same time. And we'll make it real easy for you to reference all three uh, as the meeting progresses. I do have a note here that we are uh, finalizing some documents later this week. So you're not, uh, what you see today is not the entirety of what you're gonna have available for next week. So check back in uh, before the weekend and you should see uh, some more documents specific for next week uploaded at that point. The attendee section uh, will list all the attendees who are going to be in that meeting with you. And you may or may not see some contact information there as well. You're also able to message each other through the platform. So if you click on the blue chat bubble, you can send a direct message to another advocate. You will get a notification from our system if somebody tries to message you through the system. On the left hand side is our report form area. The first is the check in feature. Go ahead and click that button before the meeting starts. It doesn't affect you getting access to the Zoom, but this is an attendance report that we're gonna be sending JC, and so we wanna make sure we get an accurate head count of who was present for each meeting. Beneath that is an option to send a thank you email to the office after the meeting concludes. You can open this in one of two ways. One, click the blue open email button at the top. That will open the native platform on your computer. So for me, I use Outlook. If I were to click on that, it would create an automated Outlook email. The script has already been crafted for you by the UN team. You can obviously personalize it and edit it if you need to, but the body has already um, been created for you and our system will pull the staffer's email for who you've met with as well. If you, if you don't have a native platform like Outlook or anything like that on your device or your computer, you can copy all of this with the copy clipboard buttons and then paste it into your Gmail or your Yahoo or whatever email platform you use. Beneath that is the meeting report form. This is a specific list of questions that uh, each of you are to answer after each meeting concludes. We'll be sending these answers to JC and her team after the event. So please take some time and make sure to go through and answer those one by one. Once you get to the bottom, you'll click submit answers and then you'll be launched back to the homepage. The take notes feature is essentially just a blank notepad. So if you don't have pen or paper available, you can take shorthand bullet point style notes during the meeting if you'd like. You can type it out in complete sentences. It's really up to you how you want to utilize this module. 
Um, it's completely optional, but it is a resource for you. Beneath that is an option to select whether the member of Congress attended or did not attend the meeting. Very important information for the government affairs team to have in terms of just intelligence gathering. That will just really dictate the type of follow-up uh, to have with that office moving forward. For those of you that have done this event before, you know uh, you may have a meeting scheduled with a member of Congress, but they get pulled away to votes or they're stuck at a committee hearing and they're not able to make it. Again, just really helpful information in terms of a debrief perspective. Beneath that is an option to uh, access your social media platforms. So if you'd like to um, post a make a Twitter post or post on the Facebook or share this on LinkedIn, you're able to do that. Um, you can, as long as you're logged in uh, through your accounts, you'll be able to access those direct, directly through the platform. Once the meeting concludes, just click on the meetings tab and you'll be launched in, uh, or it'll take you back to the homepage where you can then work your way down from one meeting to the next to the next. The legislators tab will take you to an area uh, where you can view bios for each member of Congress. It'll look like this. You'll have links to all of their social media pages as well. So if you want to go to their website or look at their uh, post onto their Facebook wall or look up their Twitter handle, you're able to do that. The bill section will pull any relevant bills you may be tracking. Uh, if you are not tracking any bills, then this area will be blank. If you are, it will show that members vote history of how they voted on that bill previously. The news section just pulls any relevant news they've been mentioned in um, across various online outlets. There'll be links to those news articles. And the committee assignment tab will list all the committee assignments that member serves on. The last three items on the top menu bar are the messages tab. That will, uh, that is where you'll be able to see those direct peer-to-peer -peer messages that you're sending back and forth with other advocates. The directory is a master directory for everyone in the event, so you're not just limited to the people in your meetings. You can contact anyone across the event on this platform. And the support tab will be your best friend in terms of uh, if you have a scheduling conflict, a technical support, really anything at all, run it through the support tab, uh, highlight the area you're having an issue with, and that way it gets routed to the appropriate staff, and then we'll be in touch to get any of those issues resolved. The more tab is basically just a drop down menu to view all of the content I've already reviewed just from the home page. So you can play around with the, how that feature works uh, as well. My last slide here, I want to spend some time just on information and reminders to keep in handy. So again, if you haven't gotten that email from us, go ahead and check your spam or junk folder to ensure it didn't end up there. Our domain is at advocacyassociates.com. You may need that in your email settings, depending on what email platform you're using to unmark as a spam. We're asking everybody to get into their meeting five minutes prior to the start time. This is mainly just to touch base with your group about roles and who's going to open up the conversation, but also to give yourself some buffer time. You may have misdialed the, the dial-in or you're having some Wi-Fi issues. We just want to make sure everyone is present when the office joins so the meeting can start on time. Again, all times are listed in Eastern time zone on your schedule. However, you're going to get a reminder email from, from us one hour prior to every single meeting throughout the course of the day with a link to your schedule. So don't feel like you need to um, um, keep one email handy to access your schedule. We're constantly updating you with a link. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to get in and out of the portal throughout the course of the day. If an office doesn't join your meeting within 10 minutes past the start time, go ahead and ha have your group hang up and have somebody from your team contact us. Um, we, our help number will be listed in the support tab, but you can call us if it's a time sensitive issue like that. Uh, well, the last thing we want is for you to hang on the line for 15, 20, 25 minutes, knowing the office has simply just had a mix up. We would rather get proactive, get in touch with them and reschedule for you later in the day. Uh, but do give them a 10 minute buffer window to join uh, past the start time. Please also know that meetings have been arranged in 15 minute blocks. Uh, these are generally going a little bit longer in our virtual setting. That's definitely a trend, but it's important to keep in mind as you prep your talking points and your pitch uh, to approach each meeting knowing that they've been arranged in 15 minute increments. Any changes to your schedule, the day of the event will be sent via email. So again, just make sure you're checking that regularly throughout the course of the day. Make sure you're in an area with good Wi-Fi connection. Uh, please mute your microphone whenever you are not speaking on the Zoom. Uh, and then I don't think we'll have an issue with this group, but just know your audience. Uh, you'll be speaking with Republicans and Democrats throughout the course of the day. So just make sure you have an appropriate background. Uh, and with that being said, I'll turn it back over and uh, happy to answer any questions that have come through the chat. 
Uh, Jason, did you want to read them off or do you want me to go through them? Um, I'm actually going to ask Wendy because I have a toddler singing in the next room, but <laughs> she'll read them off and I'll answer some of them too. Okay. Worries. Um, thanks so much for walking us through that, Lincoln. Let me pull up the... I navigated away from it and now I need to find it again. I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so one of the questions that we've been, there's a few folks that say that haven't received the email, they included it in their chat. I'll go ahead and check our registration um, and make sure and like double check that information. So if you haven't already included that in the chat, please do so, so that we can follow up and make sure um, that we're all squared away and that you have that information. Um, so that answers most of the questions. Um, the estimated length for the meetings vary. They can go, they're usually hitting about 15 minutes. Um, it is expected, as we've mentioned multiple times, uh, that you participate in each of your meetings. Uh, the members of Congress have gone out of their way to really ac be accommodating. They're excited to meet with you. Um, so let's be respectful and reciprocate that and be present when we said we were going to be present. So don't miss your meetings. Um, I could just jump in really quick, Wendy. So some yeah. of the questions talked about you have meetings on your schedule that aren't from your district or from your state. So we book all of these meetings in uh, either state specific or region specific groups. So if you were actually on the Hill, you would be with a whole group of people and you would go bing, bing, bing to all of your meetings. We do the same virtually because we don't have endless amounts of UNF staff that can support all of these meetings. Trust me, if we could, I would love to have one-on-ones with every single person, um, but we'd still pick um, districts and states that are either close close together or, uh, or or in the same state themselves. And then some states are so big that we actually divvy them up into a couple of different groups. So you will see other districts, you will see other states perhaps on your calendars, we do request, as I know Wendy has mentioned before, that you are in all of those meetings because other folks, other champions are going to support you in your meeting, and we'd love if you can do the same kind of thing for, for your fellow champions. Thanks, JC. Um, I saw questions also regarding the talking points. So basically what we've done this year to make it easy for everyone, just recognizing that um, we're all remote and like have different levels of availability. Um, and we'll talk about this a bit more, but we've actually created a script and um, JC can speak more to that. Sure, so we've created a script for you this year instead of just talking points. So we don't expect um, the entire talking point section to fit on what, what Lincoln pointed out first uh, when he pointed out the talking point section. That's where your asks will be. So that's the most important part of what we want you to convey during that meeting. But just under it, we're in the document section. Well, the first document that pops up is gonna say NBN Hill Day script. And that's what you're going to use for all of your meetings. Wendy's gonna send you a digital copy so that you have that all week this week to get really comfortable with. We're gonna go through that in the summit and then you're gonna take it to the Hill and you're gonna know it so well that you basically don't need it. Um, but it's it has written out really, really simply and easy to read, just a couple bullet points per section. Uh, trust me, I have timed the script out many times and it clocks exactly at seven minutes and 58 seconds. So that leaves a good eight minutes for questions or six minutes, seven minutes for questions and for um, introduction of your full group. And um, it's definitely going to be easy for you to follow along with. Everything is in there. We don't expect you guys to make this up on your own. We wanted to make this as easy as possible. The other thing that I'll note really quickly, one of the questions talked about, are these member specific? These are not member specific because we are trying to get the, we're trying to educate members of Congress on the same issues. We're trying to update them on COVID and malaria. We're updating them on the President's Malaria Initiative and the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria. But there are some special points in your, um, in your calendar when you have the member info. It will actually say, um, I've gone through and marked each of them, if they've signed on to Global Fund support letters in the past, if they've signed on to PMI support letters, Letters in the past, or if they are a um, if they are a, a co-sponsor of the Walter Reed um, Army Institute of Research House resolution that we've um, introduced in the last couple of Congresses. So those are the member-specific notes. But again, the script is going to be something that by the end of the day you're going to be saying it with your eyes closed. And trust me, I do that all of the time. 
Just to kind of add to JC's point, um, we'll be sending the script out to you via email tonight, and we're also going to send it to you via text message so that it's handy. Um, like JC said, it's a short five, six minute script. You can literally practice it while your coffee's brewing um, in the morning or making your tea. So just, I would recommend that you read it out loud like once a day or just like a few times before you go into your meeting so that the first time so your first meeting isn't the first time that you're seeing it and you're, you have some familiarity um, in terms of how the flow goes. But again, as JC mentioned, it's really straightforward and we are doing everything possible on our side to make this an easy process, a smooth process, something that you feel confident in um, and that it's enjoyable most of all. Um, so hand it over again for the next questions. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like there are a couple of questions on our asks themselves. Um, and then, uh, Wendy, I think there's one more for you. Um, but we have, so there's a, a question on Global Fund and the talking points for Global Fund. These are something that you're going to get a full crash course in this weekend during the summit. And you'll also see in the talking points or the script, I'll call it, uh, when we send it to you later today. Um, or tomorrow, I'm not sure when Monday's gonna send it. Um, we are asking for level funding for Global Fund because it is a three-year commitment. This is the final year of replenishment. Um, we won't be chatting about a different funding level for Global Fund until um, FY23, when the next replenishment cycle begins. So that's pretty uh, wonky here, but um, just to answer that question. Um, and I think there was one more on a malaria dear colleague letter. Uh, we are finalizing that right now with, um, with Chairman Meeks. So as soon as that's finalized, we're hoping it gets in by the deadline. If not, um, your, your request will be a little more general and it, that's on me to do all of the follow-up with each office to make sure that they will sign on in support of that dear colleague letter. There's a question here um, asking uh, the reason behind the Global Fund talking point is included as a three-year commitment that was previously determined. Is there a chance that we might be decreased or we have to ask for the sustained funding? I just noted, I just talked about that one. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We're asking for level <laughs> funding. Again, it's the it's the third year of the replenishment. We're not asking for decreased funding um, for either of our programs, Global Fund or, or PMI. Awesome. Thanks, JC. <laughs> Scrolling through the, the questions, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, let's see. Is there going to be a malaria DCL this year? Do you know when the DCL will be released? We just went through that one. Yeah, right? thanks. Uh, I was do like, you wait. want to talk about the one that says create a profile? Um, in the link and being constit, I don't know what that word is. Constituentvoice.net. Do we have yeah. a password or create a new one? I'll hand that over to Lincoln. Yeah, I, I answered that uh, individually in the chat. Yep, we're all set. Do you want to uh, mention it for the group, unless uh, just in case other folks have the same question? Yeah, so if you end up at the home page where it's asking for a username or password, don't enter, don't try to enter one. Just so click the send me a sign in link button and enter the email address that you registered for this event with. And if you're still having an issue getting in, go to the support tab and that'll come directly to our development team. And we'll cross-reference that with our registration list. Great, thank you. Um, so keep, we're keeping rolling. Yes, you will know the names of the other champions who are joining in your group. We have time next Monday um, prior to the Hill Day where you're gonna get uh, about 45 minutes with just your group. You're gonna meet with your UNF team lead, and you're gonna meet with everybody in your group and you're gonna go through the script together. You're gonna to talk through all the talking points together. You're gonna to assign who thinks they're most comfortable talking about what section. And uh, the most important part, you're gonna talk a little bit about what your story is. Why are you guys interested in malaria? Why are you here at all? What drives you to be part of nothing but net? So you will absolutely get time um, together for, for that meeting. Um, and I'm just gonna keep rolling here. Um, we, we are finalizing the request letter. Um, so I will publish that once it's final. I don't want to assign it just yet. Normally it is the co-chairs of our caucus on the house side, that's Gregory Meeks and Chris Smith, but we're just dotting T's and crossing I's. So hopefully, or flip that one around. Um, and as soon as that's done, I'll let you know. Um, we are not doing a, a companion bill in the Senate. We haven't in several years because we actually do direct member request letters in the Senate. Um, thanks to our, our um, 
most of our biggest champions in the Senate are on the Appropriations Committee, so uh, they don't do letters to themselves. Um, and yes, I need more. The invite for the 45-minute um, prep meeting is going to be part of the summit. It's next Monday. And that you should have a calendar hold for it already. Um, the login information will be distributed on Wednesday. So a few, a couple days away. Um, and I will go ahead and send that out via email. I'll send it out via text message. I will send it out in the calendar item so that you have it in every which way possible that is most convenient to you all. Um, but thank you for asking that, Anum. That's a great question. And again, um, just to reiterate, although like the schedules that you are seeing currently on Advocacy Associates on the portal, um, just remember that members sometimes have to change their schedule at the last minute. So you wanna maintain your flexibility. Um, you don't wanna assume that what you're looking at right now is the way it's going to be on Tuesday because if things come up at the last, if something changes on the member's calendar, like we still wanna be flexible, we still wanna be able to connect with them. Um, so just make sure that you're continuing to block the time of your availability, uh, just in case there are those last minute changes. So that's super important as well. And Lincoln's uh, group at FBC Associates is great at this, at updating you if there is ever a change. They will be sending you uh, meeting reminders 48 hours, 24 hours, and one hour before your meeting. That might sound like a lot, but everybody, I think, in the time of Zoom needs that kind of reminder because, trust me, I need that kind of reminder all the time for meetings I have every day. Um, and uh, and we'll do that. They'll also reach out, Lincoln can speak more to this um, uh, day of directly if there is any change with your schedule. Yeah, so like the reminders, you will get an automated email as soon as there is a change to your schedule. So if a meeting time gets moved, there's a cancellation, there's an addition, it'll be updated immediately from the system. Um, and so you'll be in tune to the minute throughout the course of the day. Thanks, Lincoln. And just to clarify, the summit kicks off on Sunday. So programming will kick off on Sunday afternoon, um, and that will run from 2 to 5.30. Um, and you have that all in your calendar items as well. Um, and then the Monday programming will also be uh, at the same time frame. Um, and let me give you guys all the details. Again, um, all this information is in your calendar item. Um, and again, day one is Sunday, the 18th, and we are starting that at 2 p.m. Um, and again, on Monday, we're starting at 3 p.m. Um, and that'll run through 5.30. And again, your meetings will happen on Tuesday, continue to block the whole day. Um, and I think we might have answered all your questions, but if you have any other questions, type them in. Yeah, of course, Gary, just go ahead and send me an email. Um, you should have my contact information since I'm the one that sends all the emails. Um, <laughs> just send me an email and let me know what you need and we'll be happy to provide a letter to your teachers or your managers in terms of what your involved with Summit is and just letting them know of your, of your commitment and involvement uh, for those days. Any other emails, any other questions? And then I know we kind of talked about this last week, um, but just wanting to reiterate the point, um, to be sure to take a screenshot of your schedule that Tuesday morning so that you upload it into the star tracker. Um, and that is to confirm participation, confirm that you're uh, that you're participating in the, in the meetings. Um, your Hill leads will go ahead and let us know if if there were any changes or glitches or bumps along the road. Um, but if you can just go ahead and submit that into the star tracker so that we can uh, stay up to date in terms of your activity, that would be great. Um, Niamal, um, if you can send me an email with that, Niamal, and let me know, or if you could just also type in your email address on the chat, um, we can make sure to follow up with you. I see Vivian has her hand up. Is she able to unmute? She should be able. Go ahead, Vivian. Yes, so I still do not have advocacy tab in my star tracker. I only have communication and uh, another thing. 
Yeah, uh, Monica also alerted the same thing. We're going to be working with our IT team to figure out like why you and Monica are hitting that bump. But in the meantime, just go ahead and capture that screenshot and just send it to us while we work that out with our IT team. Thank you for flagging that, Vivian. All right. What do you do if there's two people registered but use the same email? for showing both to attend? That is a great question. Um, go ahead and email me so that we can update our records. Um, we've had a couple people that that's been the case. Um, so we just wanna make sure that uh, that's accurate. The alternatively, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll chat. I don't wanna give like too many details and confuse other people that this doesn't apply to. So just email me and we'll chat about it. <laughs> Anyone else? Although, Wendy, you may have answered this. What if you're late on Sunday or Monday? That's fine. As the main thing is that you're on time for the training on Monday afternoon from 4.30 to 5.30. That's what you want to be on time for. You also want to be on time for your meeting. So those are the two things that we are being really uh, strict about, sorry to use the word, but yes, being really strict about is making sure that you show up for those trainings at 4.30 on Monday, East Coast time, and then all your meetings on Tuesday um, as finalized by your, by your schedule. In terms of when you're able to pop into the programming on Summit, you're welcome at any time. It's all great content and we look forward to hosting you. We look forward to sharing all that information with you all. Um, and it's also just great uh, because you can have your laptop open, make yourself some coffee, do what you need to do in your house and just be listening to it. And I think that's, you'll get it by osmosis in that way as well. <laughs> awesome. Anything else team that you wanna, um, add an asterisk to or emphasize. I would just say really quick thanks guys. I used to be on the other side of this. I was on the Hill for a long time. And I don't think you understand how impactful this is to an office. It means so much to actually hear people who are interested in something, who are passionate about something and who aren't there to just yell at them. Um, it's a really great feeling to actually talk to people who are passionate about something, especially like malaria. Um, so we're really thankful that you guys are willing to do this and just know that so are the Hill staff that you're going to be meeting with next Tuesday. And so are the members of Congress. They wanna hear why this is important to people from Columbus, Ohio or Washington DC or Seattle, Washington. I mean, from every nook and cranny of this country, that's what they're, they're looking to hear from you. So we're really excited uh, to have you guys there on Tuesday. So just a big thank you for myself. Thanks, JC. Yeah, and just to add to JC's point, I think like one of the great things about the advocacy work that we do is that we are a unifying conversation. We're a conversation that both sides of the aisle can agree on, and you guys are actually being a vehicle for unity, not to oversell that, um, but the fact that you're able to bring members of Congress from both sides of the aisle to agree on something that's beneficial for the world is pretty amazing, so I just don't uh, think you should take that lightly. Um, your contribution is a great contribution, um, and it just keeps uh, this issue at the forefront. So it's important uh, that it just remains um, at the center, considering the conversations that are happening all over the world currently with global health. So it's just good for us to just say, we're still here. <laughs> this still matters. Um, and you're using your voice to it. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, anything else before I close it out? I don't want to take any more time from anyone. Um, but in the meantime, if you guys have any other questions that you think of between now and Friday, let us know, send me an email. Um, and other than that, if for some reason you are not seeing uh, your email from everybody, um, 
Oh, I see the Andy's family. Yes, we are we are missing seeing everybody in person and your annual photo shoot with Senator Booker um, will be missed this year, but um, <laughs> but we will make it happen next year, hopefully. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to email us. I don't want to keep everybody, hold anybody captive here. Um, and Gary, don't interrupt. Sorry, go ahead, Gary. Alma. Gary? Gary? Just to book Andy's family, yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, you created a group chat if wondering if it's a lot. Um, did you create a group chat for like just your group or like the entire summit? I think if it's just their meeting group, I think that's great. Um, but if it's like the whole summit crew, I wouldn't do that because they're going to, everybody's going to be getting different messages from <laughs> different specific groups. Um, so it could be a little, a little much. Um, <laughs> So that would be my only caveat, but way to take initiative, Gary, appreciate that kind of thinking and problem solving and just thinking ahead of the curve of like, what are the hiccups that, that might come across and communication is, is always one. So thank you so much for that, Gary. Um, all right. Any, Amma, any last points, anything that we missed? <laughs> no, I think we've covered everything. I hope the champions feel prepared and excited. It's a great um, opportunity to really participate in our democracy. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you feel like you are every bit as accomplished and impactful in this campaign as you are. Um, we're really excited to see you in a few days. Awesome, everyone. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. And I hope that you are uh, well um, and that you continue to just keep in communication with us. Again, we're going to go ahead and send those in the information out via email getting text messages from us every day because we want to get you excited because we're excited um, and want to make sure that we're all in this party together all the way through Sunday and through Tuesday. Um, so thank you all so much once again, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care, yeah. everyone. And big thank you to Lincoln for joining us. And yes, thanks, so Lincoln. Awesome. For <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everybody.